0.04%. That is the chance of your new Toyota twin turbo V6 engine failing on you. Today we're going to cut the crap and get down to science and I'm going to tell you why you have nothing to worry about despite what you heard about bearing failures. As you guys may have heard, Toyota is having an issue. It looks intimidating. That's because it is. It looks like it's burnt. People are afraid of everything is the quote by French Mayor Jean-Francois Copé. And he's exactly right. People fear everything. We're going to use actual science today to determine if there's really anything to worry about with these new Toyota V6 twin turbo engines. Scientifically and statistically, no. There's nothing to worry about. Toyota has sold about 234,000 of those vehicles with that twin turbo V6. That's a big number. And that includes, again, the LS500, which has this engine, the Sequoia, the, T the Tundra, and the um, LX600. That's the other one I'm forgetting. So 234,000. That's how many are sold. That's how many on the road with this engine. So these are the numbers. We're going to use science. We're going to look at the numbers. Of that big number, we've only got about anecdotally 10 stories of main bearing failures online or anecdotally. I heard my buddy said, my mechanic friend said, blah, blah, blah. You get what I'm saying. You're going to be hard pressed to find 10 verifiable main bearing failures online if you go ahead and search right now. So how did I come up with 0.04%? Let's round that number up to 100. You're never going to find online 100 people claiming that their Toyota twin turbo V6 had some sort of main bearing failure. But I rounded it up to 100 just to be fair, just to be on the extreme end. And so if we take 100 and divide it by 234,000, we get that 0.04%. Again, that's being generous on the failure side because you're never going to find 100 verifiable anecdotes online about people's twin turbo V6s failing. So that's where that number comes from. That's an infinitesimally, infinitesimally, sorry, it's a hard word to say, small number. You get what I'm saying. It's tiny. It's a very, very small percentage. Behind me is uh, one of my outbuildings, right? Question, what's my favorite color based on the paint on this outbuilding? I'll give you as much time as you need. All right, how many, how many people pick the obvious answer? We all know it's red, right? Red is my favorite color, right? According to the paint, right? Easy, right? No. <laughs> if you look at the paint, the majority of the color is white, not red. So why do people pick the color red? The intensity of the red clouds their judgment. It clouds their capacity to deduce what's going on with the paint scheme here. The majority of paint, as far as square footage, is white. So white would be the painter's favorite color insofar as the paint scheme on this building. So the intensity on this paint, this red paint, is kind of like seeing a few anecdotes over here online about how some Toyota engines are catastrophically spinning their main bearings and oh my god, the sky is falling. And they can't see statistically what's going on. Statistically, the red on this building behind me is 0.04% of the entire building. And the reason why I'm talking about fear and science and, and rambling about all this sort of thing is because people are afraid of everything. And science was created to combat man's fear. In other words, you know, 
since people are afraid of everything, they tend to start getting religious and start just wanting to believe their feelings and they want answers to the mysteries. Is the Toyota engine going to last? What happens after we die? You know, where did we come from? Will my engine make it past 10,000 miles? Is my main bearing going to fail? Everything, the sky is falling. Blah. So the point of today's video is to bring it back into reality and stop being afraid of things and are statistically irrelevant. People have been writing, asking my opinion on YouTube. What do I think about the main bearing failures on these twin turbo V6s? You were a proponent of these things and you said Toyota and Lexus wouldn't let us down, blah, blah, blah. And they're not. You have a 0.04% chance of failure. Let's say you go to the casino and you could go to a table, whatever game, blackjack, craps, roulette, whatever, and you could place a bet and you have a 0.04% chance of losing, would you not consider that bet a guaranteed win? Of course you would. But wait, it gets better. What would happen if, even if you were unlucky enough to be on the losing end of that 0.04% bet, if you lost, <laughs> what if the casino manager took you aside and said, you know what? Give us a month or two, and we're going to refund all your money. Would you still not consider that a winning bet? And then you could play the game all over again. That's Toyota's way. They're going to make it better. How do we know? Well, look at this thing. This is your old, reliable 4.6 V8 engine. This is the old school dinosaur. This thing lasts forever. This is, this is the engine you should get. Not this newfangled twin turbine something whatchamacallit with its turbines. You need to get a naturally aspirated V8 like in this Lexus GX460 with its 4.6 bulletproof V8 engine. Well, guess what? Back when these things came out, Toyota and Lexus recalled 270,000 of them. That's right. You're bulletproof. Don't make them like they used to. They should have kept the V8, blah, 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 blah. Engine that's in this car that we drive, your 4.6 liter V8 engine, had a recall of 270,000 engines that had a problem starting in 2010. So what does that mean? What's my point? Is that even if there is a problem, Toyota has a reputation of making things better. They will bulletproof it. They will not simply brush it off and go, add a heck with it, give, it, give him his money back. Because these things last forever, but they had a relatively large amount of uh, uh, engine issues in the beginning. What happened? They identified it, they fixed it, they're done. So these main bearing issues that are 0.04% insignificant, right? Of those issues, Toyota is not just going to open it up and tell the tech, slap a new bearing in it. They're going to fix the problem. They're going to identify the problem. And if there is a mass scale problem affecting a large number of uh, engines, they're going to do a recall like they did on this. They're going to fix it and it's going to last you forever. So there is another factor that isn't being talked about. And yes, I know these stats are, you know, nobody can, uh, again, they're not accurate, but they're close enough. And they're true and they're scientific. And that's the point. You can't argue with, you got this many normal twin turbo V6s and the itty bitty bout of problems here. You can't be distracted by the red El Toro, you know? That's what animals, dumb animals are distracted by red things. <laughs> El Toro goes crazy. Ah, it's my engine bearing, blah. <laughs> Toyota's going out of business. There is a factor of people doing dumb stuff with their cars. So outside of, did Toyota engineer this right, this engine right? Uh, did, uh, did the manufacturers make some sort of casting mistake and clog up the uh, oil passage or something? Uh, are they assembling in them right at the Mexican factories, you know, or the Japanese factories, wherever they're assembled, right? 
what, what, what's the problem? This is also a fourth problem over here, and that is, and every mechanic knows this, every mechanic more than seeing <laughs> spun bearings on a twin turbo V6 Toyota or Lexus, more than seeing that, what they see on a daily basis is people doing dumb stuff with their cars. That is more likely than any other scenario. And when I say dumb stuff with their car, I mean, you know, they forgot to take the plastic off the oil filter before putting it in. Everybody knows, you know, change your oil at 3,000 miles to heck what the engineer said about their 10,000 mile oil change interval and their twin turbo V6 or whatever it is. No, half that. Put gear oil in your engine so make it last long. My point is people do dumb stuff with their cars. That is more statistically prevalent than Toyota failing and doing dumb stuff with their engineering and manufacturing and assembly. So to speculate for this tiny 0.04% of whatever, it's more likely that people, somebody did something dumb. They put the wrong oil, they put the filter on with the plastic on it, or they put the wrong filter on it. These Toyotas are notorious for being able to take whatever filter fits on them or some other nonsense. That is more likely statistically. You know, I hate to say it, but yes, that, that happens. And any mechanic can, you know, you can go on YouTube and watch the, uh, the, the infinite number of videos of people going, um, you know, mechanics showing, look what somebody bought and look what silly thing they did. And we like to think nobody would do that with a brand new V6 twin turbo uh, Toyota or Lexus. Those things are expensive. Certainly those people are smart. No, it doesn't work that way. It's all across the board. <laughs> and again, going back to that fear quote, you better change your oil at 3,000 or 5,000 miles. You should be afraid. Those engineers don't know what they're talking about. You should put in thicker oil and, you know, I've been doing it with this oil filter for a million years, so I might as well blah, 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 blah. And then that's how you get spun bearings. 0.04%. You got nothing statistically and scientifically to worry about. It doesn't add up. Science isn't taught in public schools anymore since the 1950s or 60s, okay? They don't teach it anymore. They don't teach what are the numbers? What is the reality? And then you form your conclusion. Instead, it's who's being the loudest? What's the loudest color? Who's got the most views on YouTube? Who's got the, the, the most posts on Reddit or whatever internet forum? They're the lot. That's the one. Look, it's red. Use your intelligence. Nothing to worry about the stats, don't lie. Whether you wanna, whatever series of numbers, if you wanna, you can play with this number of Toyota twin turbo V6 sold and you can play with this number of uh, main engine bearings that are potentially are already broken. They're nowhere near in the same realm. They're never gonna be statistically relevant if you're scientific about it and stop being fearful about it like the French mayor said. That's okay to be afraid. Just know that being afraid is not the same as science. And so try to separate the two if possible, if you wanna be logical about whether or not you think Toyota is about to blow up their generational reputation for quality, durability, and reliability because they don't know how to make an engine anymore. You think about that. Now, as far as stats in this video, I did not include the Land Cruiser 300, which has also had this twin turbo V6 engine uh, since 2021 because I can't find good reliable stats on that. Furthermore, the engine on that Land Cruiser 300 was offered with a turbo diesel variant alongside the gasoline variant that we're talking about. So I don't know the percentages of what's what. But anecdotally, if you try to search however deep you want online about main bearing failures in the Land Cruiser uh, 300 that's been on the market in the world market since 2021, so we're going on four or five years here, however you want to count it, you can't find 
spun engine bearings on the Land Cruiser 300. You don't. You may be able to find, if you search deep, deep enough, one or two, but that's a guess. But Captain, you cannot include the LS500 in these stats. Everybody knows that's a sedan, and the Tundra is a much heavier pickup truck and under much more weight and loads. Not so. The Lexus LS500, even though it's a sedan, is actually a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle. Yes, it's got three differentials. The same full-time four-wheel drive and Torsen C-type center differential that's in your Lexus GX, LS, and Land Cruisers. That's in the LS500 sedan too. Three differentials, and that makes it a fat cow rounded up to about 5,000 pounds. What's a Tundra way over here without that center differential? About 5,000 pounds. That's its lightest variant. So the weights are really similar between the LS sedan and the Tundra over here, especially when you add in that third differential and tons of luxury, the sound deadening, all the Lexus crap they're going to add to it. The weights compared to the sedan and the Tundra are very similar. Furthermore, the LS makes up a very low amount of these stats, about 25,000 of those sold so far in the U.S., whereas the Tundra has sold over 118,000 over here, and it gets better. So more people over here on the Tundra side say, my Tundra's working perfectly. I love it perfectly. So again, keep that in perspective. But then there's the million dollar question. And that is, what if my twin turbo V6 and my Toyota or Lexus is fine now? Is it going to spin that main bearing? Is it going to have an engine failure later on? And that's a very valid and concerning question. Because even if your engine's fine now, is it going to break later? And nobody truly knows the answer to that except for Toyota, who's not telling us. It's very improbable that Toyota didn't torture test this twin turbo V6 for thousands of miles in the years in its research and development. They know what a bearing looks like. They know how to check bearings as a team of engineers on uh, the design and development of this engine. And they certainly have torture tested this engine. So again, all of this is speculation when i talk about it maybe it's customers doing weird things maybe it's manufacturing maybe it's assembly it's all speculation nobody except for toyota truly knows but the fact that toyota saying put in a new short block to fix the issue and the issue is presumably fixed then it's probably some sort of manufacturing or assembly issue not an engineering issue however again this won't be proven until Toyota actually says something.